Grace, and I'm here today to offer a revolutionary way to help solve the health crisis in the United States and the world. I'm not just talking about the pandemic. I'm talking about a crisis of overall well-being. And I was a part of that crisis, and like many, I had hit rock bottom. My hope is that my, my story will inspire those that are struggling to create a new way to connect to your own body and revolutionize a way to health. If not for you, then maybe someone you know. In 2013, I ran 52 marathons in 52 weeks. That's one a week, 1,362.4 miles total. <laughs> and I, I was not... <laughs> <laughs> I, I was not, an, I am not an elite athlete, heck, I wasn't even athletic in high school. My, my transformational journey actually began when I was a struggling mom in my late 30s, I had two teenagers, and I was severely depressed, I was overweight, and addicted to drugs. I was just going through the motions of my daily life and uh, feeling really stuck. I was eating terribly. I was drinking too much. And it was around this time that my family decided to go on a trip to Hawaii. And I thought, I'm going to go on this trip, and I'm going to try to get healthy. So on that first day, I thought, I'm going to go for a run. Great idea, right? 20 minutes. I got this. And I go out there, and right away, I'm breathing way too heavy. My heart rate is way too high. I am gasping for air. I'm like dying out there. But something inside of me came alive. For the first time, I felt connected, connected to the ocean, connected to the earth, and truly accepted how hard this moment truly felt. And for the first time, I had this connection with my body. And it was amazing. So when I got home, I continued running and the extra weight that I was carrying started melting away, and I got to the point where running four miles felt pretty easy. And running actually even helped repair a difficult relationship that I had with my father. For the first time, he was really proud and supportive of what I was accomplishing. And so I, as my mileage increased, got up to about seven miles, and I thought, I'm gonna train for a marathon, but a marathon is 26.2 miles, okay? And I only had seven under my belt, but I got it in my head. I just have to work up to that. And so I did it, and I got through it. And then I heard that there are special marathons. Special? Special marathons that you have to qualify for, like the Boston Marathon, the oldest and most prestigious annual marathon in the world. I was like, wow, cool, new challenge. I love it. And my dad became my number one fan. And um, sadly, during my training, my father was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And uh, just 35 days after his diagnosis, he passed away. And I was, I was devastated. I had another race coming up, and I knew he would want me to run it. So just 10 days after he passed away on my 19th attempt, I finally qualified for the Boston Marathon, and I, I knew we had done it together. I knew. <laughs> but after everything that I had learned about pancreatic cancer and it being the third leading cause of cancer-related death in the United States, I wanted to do something to raise money for research so that no one would have to suffer the way my dad did. But I also wanted to raise awareness because it was needed and also because everything my dad did, he did it big. So I thought, I'm gonna run 52 marathons in 52 weeks. I don't know how I'm gonna do it. I work full time, so I'm gonna have to leave my office on a Friday, sometimes run another marathon in another city, state, even country, and then get back to work on Monday morning by nine o'clock. But off I went dedicating every marathon to someone affected by pancreatic cancer. And on my last marathon, at mile 25, my dear friend Lupe Romero de la Cruz, she met me there, and she's a pancreatic cancer survivor, beautiful, and we crossed that finish line together, and it was a beautiful journey. It really was. But here's the problem. There's a health crisis. And it's not just the crisis of pancreatic cancer or the pandemic, but it's this feeling of 
overall discontent and unhealthiness is both mental and physical. We need a health revolution. And I think one of the major contributing factors to this is that people are not getting enough exercise. Um, you know, the, Cle the Cleveland Clinic actually says that 80% of American adults are not getting the recommended amount of exercise, 80%, and potentially setting, setting them up for years and years of health problems that could be prevented. And because of this, we have high rates of cancer, we have high prescription drug costs, and, you know, um, it's really sad, but I think we can change this. It's time we start viewing our society as being in need of health. But the question is how? How do we do that? How do we get our people healthy? How do we get our society healthy? Well, my hope is that my story can demonstrate how exercise can really transform lives. It can. I mean, I can tell you all the things that you may or may not already know, like you can exercise for 30 minutes a day, you can pick an inspiring goal, you can join an organization to help make a difference, not just for you, but for others. And or invite a friend, and yes, all those things work, they do. But here's the thing, they won't work unless we create this loving relationship with our body, which includes thanking it for all it does for us. Our bodies are amazing. I think one of the reasons people don't have this loving relationship with their body is because we don't really wanna hear what it would have to say. <laughs> I mean, ask your body this question. How does it feel about the way it's being treated? How does it feel? Your body is like the child in you that wakes up every morning and wants to try again. We can make a commitment and redirect any pain into action. And we can do this daily check-in with ourselves every day and decide each day how you're gonna treat your body. And then something will happen to you. You'll have no desire to go back to that old, unhealthy life. Yes, it will try to pull you back because it was so much more familiar, but you'll get hooked to this joy of moving, to this joy of being healthy. And then you'll have that connection to your body like I did that first time when I went on that run in Hawaii. And I know some of you may be thinking, yeah, Julie, I've tried to have this loving relationship with my body and it doesn't work. Believe me, I get it. There are days that I struggle too. And so when you're struggling like that, on those days, just think, okay, let's just be healthier. And my vehicle to get healthy was running. Running was my savior, but the vehicle can be anything. Your first relationship in this revolution needs to be a loving relationship with your body. And once you get that and understand it, it's a life you can live forever, accepting and loving your limitations, what you can and can't do. Today, I want to share with you a new way to think about exercise. It's going to transform the way you think about it. Okay, are you ready? Here it is. <laughs> okay, you don't just say, I'm going for a run. You say, I'm going to become a runner. You don't just say, I'm going for a walk. You say, I am going to become a walker. You don't just say, I'm going for a swim. You say, I'm going to become a swimmer. You don't just say, I'm gonna go do some yoga. You say, I'm going to become a yogi. You see, it's a mindset shift. It's a new way of seeing yourself. It's going to break down the wall between you and exercise. It's going to become a part of who you truly are in this world. You know, I used to walk my dog down to the beach and see thousands of people running in groups, all sizes, shapes, colors, and it was so beautiful, but I would cry because it was like there was this wall between us that I, I couldn't break through. And then one day my dad said, why don't you go join a, a running group, Julie? And I said, okay, and I did it. I was going to become a runner. And I mean, I love to run because I love the joy of running. What do you love to do? It doesn't mean that there are times that I don't feel like running or getting out there and exercising, but it, then I think, like, what is the uh, alternative? And I get back out there, and I keep going. 
I'm a grandmother now, and I just ran my 110th marathon last month. <laughs> okay? And along the way, I have raised nearly a million dollars for pancreatic cancer research. <laughs> I also just recently supported my friend Jocelyn Rivas in her world record attempt to become the youngest woman to run 100 marathons. She's 24. She's amazing. <laughs> Miracles happen when you don't just do what you love, but you become it. You stay with it, and you stay with it, and you form this remarkable relationship with your body that says, maybe we really can do this. The past resolves, the future opens up, and the revolution begins. We got this.